welcome back to our little farm in Portugal. In the spring, we found this little apple tree surrounded by mimosa. Mimosa is a invasive species here in Portugal. It grows so quickly, so densely, so tall. We're right on the edge of what we call the cork forest. We've got six big cork trees here and many smaller ones which we are giving space. In the same way we created space for this apple tree, we're creating space for the smaller cork trees to grow and develop and hopefully take over from the mimosa. Let me show you an example of our small cork oaks. You coming to help? I'm going to see what you're up to. This is a wee cork oak that we noticed last year. And I gave it a little prune down here. If you have a look down near the bottom, which was the main, it looked like the tallest stem that was growing straight. And over the last year, this gorse has grown back and it needs a little bit more clearing so that it doesn't smother the new cork oak. I read a study into the management of cork oaks and they reckoned that to cut the bottom third was the best for production. So when I say cut the bottom third, it just means prune off any of the, the little tiny branches. So for example, that little one. And there are a few smaller shoots growing around it, which there's no point in having. Could come along with a brush cutter, or Dan would come along with a brush cutter and clear this. But I prefer to do a light touch approach that way we can see if there's anything different growing, any other species. Last year we found a lot of porcini mushrooms here, so I don't want to damage anything. This is a dead cork oak, which we're not allowed to cut down. Cork oaks are a protected species in Portugal. You're not allowed to cut them down, dead or alive. You can get permission to take them down, but We've been leaving this one because we think it's quite stately and beautiful. When we came, it was quite a bit bigger, but the dead branches have slowly been falling off. Over here is a prime example of a cork oak we've been clearing around to give it space. So we found this baby cork oak last year and we've been giving it space. We cut back all the mimosa around here. All of this is new growth since we cut it all back last year. So we're going to get on, cut back some more of this mimosa and give this cork oak a bit more space to grow tall and strong. Simba! I'm just clearing some of the side branches off with the axe. This is a very young madronio also known as the strawberry fruit bush. We have lots of them on the land and they're a native species. So we're just gonna give this one a little bit of assistance by keeping the gorse at bay. Okay, just snip off these mimosas and just leave them where they lie. Just break it up and chop and drop. Dan created this path the whole way through the cork oak forest and we try and stick to this path. We're trying to keep erosion to a minimum in this area. Well, in every area. So we've created paths everywhere. I will show you more of those paths in the forest later. 
small bits of mimosa that we're chopping we'll just leave behind. Slightly bigger bits we take them away because they become trip hazards and the brambles grow up through them and we'll wood chip those and use them on our vegetable paths and to mulch around trees. The stuff that's too big for the chipper is kept for firewood. None of this mimosa is wasted. I think this pile is getting a bit big and we need to get the chipper out. That'll be tomorrow's job. This slate post here marks the border and this is the way in to what we call the mimosa forest. We're going into the mimosa forest and the cork oak forest. And just to get your bearings, this is where we park the truck and this is the entrance to the barn. Feel free to press pause. I'll leave that here. If you'd like to take a closer look at the map. We've cut this path so we can walk along the border so we know where our land is. And we keep on managing the mimosa to keep our pathways clear. Down through here, we've got a good wide path down through the forest which takes us down to the bottom of our land. Let's go and have a look. Look at all the mimosa seedlings growing. There's hundreds of them. got a little oak tree here on the edge of our land which we've cleared around we've cleared the mimosa from the bottom of it and hopefully it'll grow up into a good healthy tree and help stop some of these mimosas growing we've got a pretty dense mess of some dead some living mimosas here which we've got to thin out and uh, clear there are native trees in there there's oak trees madronio and cork oaks and we want them to grow up and take over yeah, that's all this. Um. A dead thing. Last year we cut this huge swathe here through the forest. We cut away the mimosa so we could actually access through here and we could walk up through here. The mimosa has many uses for firewood, for wood chip. We've also used it to make a fence and the archway for the kiwis to grow on. We're going down to the bottom of our property and uh, this takes us down into the cork forest. There's a cork oak over here somewhere, isn't there? Oh uh, yeah, look there. There's a cork oak we found last year. I think it needs a bit more clearing around it. We do have a madronio here that's nice and healthy, but I think this cork oak needs a couple of hours of work to uh, open it up a bit more. Where we cut the mimosa through here, it's a natural path. Down through here, we've got a bit of banking on our right, and the path is actually a a nice flat space. Just over to my left is the uh, the border of our land. There's a kind of a bit of wall that is sometimes there, sometimes not. This is a pathway through the middle 
of the cork oak forest that I cleared and made last year. And here is a pathway down to the bottom of our land. This one needs to go. There's another cork oak here. Not growing very straight at the moment. Again, it needs a bit of clearing around it. There's a bit more mimosa here to drag up for the chipper. Again, here there's a lot of mimosa, but there are cork and oak trees and madronios. This is the route of the path back up, uh, up a level if you like. And here, I think I'm gonna use some of the mimosa we've cut to lay them horizontal against a bank, stake them in with some posts, so we can create some steps up this steep bit of banking here. Looking up, th up through the cork forest, we can see the big cork oaks, which have been, had their bark the cork harvested we've got the yellow gorse purple heather it's absolutely stunning walking through here one of our plans is to get a motion activated night vision camera down here so we can see what animals are prowling around we know there's animals we've seen footprints scratchings but we've never seen what they are maybe there's lynx definitely wild boar or javali as they're called in portugal what else could there be? Wolves, bears, lynx, mongoose, deer. We want to see what's down here. What's, what wildlife is there on our land? Right, let's carry on. This cork oak is one of the medium aged corks that are here. It's never had its bark harvested, the cork harvested. Uh, it's a multi stemmed one. The cork is absolutely beautiful. It, it, it's fire resistant, it's drought resistant, and it's a fantastic product. You can use it for obviously wine bottles, for insulation. This is the rest of our land heading off here towards the west. If you'd like to see the rest of it, we could make a video about that. Let us know in the comments. But now we're going back up to the top of the cork forest where we were working earlier to finish off that job. So let's go back up. When we came to look at this property before we bought it, this space here was a, a thicket of mimosa. You couldn't even walk through it. One of the conditions of the sale was the owner cleared this space. 
we had a, a field here of branches and logs. We spent most of last year clearing all that, cutting it up into firewood. Now we have some oaks coming back in. We have a stone pine. We have some other trees growing here. We're going to keep planting trees in this space, keep managing it, and hopefully it will be an extension of the cork oak forest. Right now, I've got my brush cutting blade on. I'm going to get rid of all the brambles, the, the small mimosas, and give all the trees that we want to have here a chance to grow and develop into big, proper trees. <laughs> So, do you remember Michelle, who gave us an IBC back when we were clearing the well? Well, he is making changes in his garden, and yesterday he pulled out these lilac trees. We found a spot we can see from our veranda, so in early spring this should be a, a, a profusion of uh, blue lilac flowers. I came through here with the brush cutter, took out all the small uh, mimosas, and all the pokeweed, all the brambles. We're not 100% certain what this tree is, but I've left a single stem and we've got some space down here for more trees. And we're going to plant one of those lilac trees. Sunday morning bells. Yeah. We have to thank everyone who commented on the attic video. It was absolutely brilliant to be able to find out what some of those curious items were. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. And we're still free. This weekend, we've cleared quite a lot of mimosa from the forest. We've opened up trees to allow them to grow. We've got a pretty big pile of cuttings to go through the chipper but it's been raining quite a bit today so it's not a great day for the chipper we'll be doing that sometime soon but now i'm gonna go off and stream down right down the bottom that i haven't touched this year we'll see you again next time mm -hmm.